Okay, um, I'm going to talk about finding the area under the curve when the curve is full of sample means. Um, remember, before what we had underneath the curve was simply continuous or discrete random variables. Now what we're able to do is we're able to apply the central limit theorem, which lets us make Draw, draw some conclusions and apply this normal distribution to sample means. Simply saying that if I take a bunch of samples out of a population and I average every one of those samples, then I can take the average of those samples and apply them to a normal curve. In other words, fill the curve up with the mean of those samples and then be able to predict the probability that the sample mean for any one of those samples is greater than, less than, or between any given value. So what we're going to work with is a normal population has a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of 12. I'm going to take a sample of 9, and once I take that sample of 9, based on the population having a mean of 60, What's the probability that the sample mean that I, that I generate from my sample of 9 is greater than 63? The way that I'm going to do that is the same way that we've done it in all the other chapters. And that is I'm going to calculate a z-score. The difference is, is that when I have sample means, probability that a sample mean when I have a sample mean, I have to make this adjustment in the denominator. What I end up having to do is I end up having to adjust the population standard deviation for the sample size. And the way that I do that is I substitute in for where I normally just have sigma here. What I substitute in is what we refer to as the standard error of the mean. That's just a really technical term for saying if I'm going to use the normal distribution to come to conclusions and to make inferences about sample means based on the population mean, then I have to adjust the standard deviation of the population. So knowing that, now what I can do is I've got this problem pretty much set up for you. It's telling me what's the probability that the sample mean is greater than 63. So I've simply said what's the probability that x bar, x bar meaning being the symbol for sample mean, what's the probability that given the population mean of 60, the probability that the sample mean is greater than 63? Well, here's my curve. I want to know what's the probability that x bar is greater than 63. Here's my mean. So I know that I'm solving for this very upper right-hand side of the curve. And so I'm going to back into it just like I've done before. I'm going to calculate a z-score. And remember that z-score is going to give me the area that falls between any given z-score for a point on the horizontal axis and the mean of the distribution. Once I have that, I'm still going to use that idea that this part of the curve contains 0 0.50, so I know that whatever I find for this area plus this area has to equal 0 0.50, so I'm going to back into it just like we did in the other chapters. Okay, so I've simply gone in over here and I've substituted into this formula all the information from the problem. X bar, number I'm solving for is 63, mean of the standard deviation is 60, standard deviation of 12, goes in here for sigma. Um, I had a sample of 9, that goes in down here for n. Now all I'm going to do is solve that equation to come up with my z-score. So once I've done that little bit of math, it is giving me a z-score of 0 0.75.
So I'm going to go into the normal table and I'm going to find the area associated with a z-score of 0.75. What the table tells me is that the area underneath the curve associated with a z-score of 0.75 is 0 0.2734. So now that I know that the area that falls between the z-score associated with an x-bar of 63 is 0.2734, I know this entire side of the curve is 0.50, I'm simply going to subtract. What it tells me is the area that falls right here where this arrow is, is 0.2266. Um, or I can say that there is a 22.66% probability that the sample mean is greater than 63. I will come back and work another one of these problems in a little bit. Thanks.